So there are two Poco phones that I absolutely loved in 2023. The Poco F5 was one and the Poco X5 Pro was another. And well, it's 2024 and the successor to the Poco X5 Pro is here. This is the new Poco X6 Pro. And let me tell you straight away that this is a massive, massive upgrade. It brings big changes to hardware, software, but there are a couple of quirks too. You know what? Let's get into detail. This is what the new Poco X6 Pro looks like. I would have liked the yellow variant, which has the vegan leather finish on the back, but we have the Spectre black variant, which has this mirror glass-like finish on the back. I mean, it is plastic, but looks very premium. Anyway, I'll get back to the design, but the big deal here is the performance this brings. The specs will blow you away. So this has the new MediaTek Dimensity 8300 Ultra processor, which is based on TSMC's efficient 4 nanometer architecture. And this has the Prime A715 core that goes to 3.3 5 gigahertz. Add to that the powerful Mali G615 GPU, Wild Boost 2.0 for gaming, which I'll get to, the biggest vapor chamber cooling system on a Poco phone, and add to that flagship grade LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. I mean, these specs are incredible. And if you thought the Poco F5's benchmark scores last year were impressive, just look at the benchmark scores from this phone. The X6 Pro hits 1.4 million in Android, which is crazy. I mean, just look at the CPU score and especially the very high GPU score. Yeah, this is powerful. But to give you an idea, the Android score here is higher than the OnePlus 11R with 8 Plus Gen 1, which by the way costs 40k. I mean, the 8300 even comes close to 8 Gen 2 in Android, which is insane considering 8 Gen 2 phones cost 50, 60k. And not just Android, the 8300 Ultra does really well in Geekbench too. Now, I know there's always doubts around throttling, heating, when there's a new powerful chipset around, but in the CPU throttling test, the graph is green from the start to finish, and we tested this in room temperatures. We also checked the temperature after the test, and the phone was warm as you can see, but it's very usual. In fact, we ran the throttling test multiple times and every single time, the X6 Pro came out on top and the performance numbers are incredible too. We even checked the temperature after playing Genshin Impact at 60 FPS and the temperature was very usual. I'm not sure if this is due to the vapor chamber cooling or it's just the chipset is more efficient, but it's good. Now, this is obviously a new chipset, so I was also curious to see if it supports the best graphics settings in popular games. In BGMI, there is support for HDR Ultra as well as Smooth Plus 90 FPS setting. In COD Mobile, there is support for 120 FPS is gaming on medium graphics, which is great. And like I said, there is support for max graphics in Genshin Impact. So this is clearly a very powerful phone. And as for real performance, games run very well on this phone. I mean, we have been testing multiple games on this phone and there's no weird lag or stutter. And gaming on this feels like what you'd expect on a good high-end phone. Plus, I mentioned this has Wild Boost 2.0, which is a hyper-boost gaming feature that boosts FPS in games, improves brightness and sound effects in games. That sampling rate is increased from 240Hz to 480Hz and the touch detection also gets better. I mean, even in day-to-day -day performance, this is a snappy phone. Everything runs smooth, apps launch quick, and it's also due to the fact that there's Hyper OS here. I mean, this is the first one in India to bring Hyper OS pre-installed, and this is based on Android 14, and that's great. But what's absolutely amazing is the fact that Poco is promising three OS updates for this phone, along with four years of security patches. So this will go to Android 17. Android 17. Anyway, Hyper OS brings these sleek animations that look great on this phone. There are new features like the new lock screen customization options, which are very cool. There are updated apps, be it for the Files app or the Clock app. The Notes app has been updated, so has been the Recorder app. Anyway, you get the usual apps. And as for third-party ones, there are these apps and games, and you can uninstall them. This also still has the wallpaper carousal feature, aka Glass. Anyway, it's not just the performance that's a big upgrade. Just check out the display. The display here is now a 12-bit OLED display with 1.5K resolution, 120Hz refresh rate, 1800 nits of peak brightness, and it's a really nice display. It's got all the AMOLED goodness in terms of punchy colors, pitch dark blacks, and it's bright too, so outdoor usage is no issues. It's also 1.5K, like I said, so it just seems sharp and nice in day-to-day -day usage. And it also has Dolby Vision support, so movies and shows look gorgeous on the screen. I also like the narrow unified bezels all around, and there's dual stereo speakers, and both the speakers are in the frame, which is nice, and these are Dolby Atmos supported speakers speakers that are loud and crisp. There's also an IR blast on the top here. The dual SIM slot is here and it has no micro SD support just like the X5 Pro. And this whole design is also IP54 rated up from IP53 in the last gen. And yeah, this is not a big or bulky phone. It's fairly sleek at 8.25 millimeters and it weighs 190 grams. Now one good change here is the fact that the fingerprint scanner is an in-display one and it's fast and nice and even lets you check your heart rate. The battery remains 5000 mAh and that's fine and I'm yet to test the battery performance here but with the 4 nanometer chipset it should be good enough and in terms of charging 
charging, you get the 67 watt turbocharger in the box. Now, I did mention a couple of quirks, right? So the number one quirk is the fact that this does not have the headphone jack. I mean, it's probably not a big deal anymore, but the X5 Pro had it, the F5 had it. So yeah, something to note. Also, the main camera is no longer a 108 megapixel sensor, but the 64 megapixel sensor has OIS, which I think is a good addition. The ultra wide angle camera remains the same, 8 megapixel, and there's the same 2 megapixel macro lens. In terms of videos, there's 4K 30 FPS support, although the 16 megapixel front camera is limited to 1080p videos. Now, I've only had this phone briefly, and I've been taking photos on the phone, which look fairly good in daytime or low light. I mean, most of these photos from the main camera look good, but yeah, I will be testing things more to get a better idea. Apart from that, the Poco X6 Pro has all the 5G bands, it has NSV support, Wi-Fi 6, and there's Bluetooth 5.4. To call center, my opinion so far of the Poco X6 Pro is that this is a no-nonsense smartphone with a performance that can match a lot of higher-end phones that are priced way higher. I mean, there's no other smartphone in the 20 to 30K price segment that can match its raw performance. I mean, the whole combo of 8300 Ultra, LPDDR5 X RAM, UFS 4.0 storage, vapor chamber cooling, wild boost is just a big, big USP here. Yeah, I'm still waiting for the official price in India, but so far, it seems like Poco hasn't cut any corners in terms of software or updates or display or cameras. I mean, with the Poco X6 Pro, Poco is clearly starting 2024 with a bang. Anyway, I will be pinning the price of the Poco X6 Pro down in the comments, so check it out and let me know your thoughts on on this phone, the performance, comment down below. Thanks for watching.